everybody. So today we come over to the uh, third part of our lecture on, uh, on special relativity. And uh, having uh, done the postulates of relativity and uh, seen uh, consequences like uh, a length contraction, uh, uh, let's uh, move over to another interesting um, consequence that's called a time dilation. Okay? So, um, just to uh, set up the thing a little bit more, uh, let's, let's just have um, uh, the results which we had in our last lecture, it's mainly on length contraction. So, uh, what did you see there? So, uh, what we saw there was uh, if you have a rod, you know, if you have some, some object at rest in, uh, in a certain frame, you go and measure its length. Okay? find that the length of this rod, let us say it is uh, it's L0. Okay? Now, um, if you go and measure this in a, in a different frame from which this, is, uh, this, this the rod appears to be moving okay, with an uniform velocity, uh, the length of the moving rod appears to be shortened in the direction of its motion. Okay? Um, of course, um, uh, so, so that the result that we got. So, if you uh, see the uh, length of uh, this object, this rod, from S frame, okay. Remember that the rod is at rest in the S prime frame, which is moving at a certain uniform velocity v. Then, what's the length that we're going to see in the S frame? It's L zero times the root over of one minus v square by c square. So, obviously. Um, L is less than L0. Okay? So, the uh, length of a moving rod or a moving object appears to be shortened as compared uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the measured length in its rest frame. Okay? So, uh, well, so having seen uh, something to do with the uh, space coordinates, I mean that is the length contraction. Um, what do we do? I mean, what, what is it that we have uh, with the time component in special relativity? Does something happen there? Okay? Remember in Galilean transformation, of course, uh, time in both these frames in S and S prime frames uh, are the same. They, they are there moving with a certain um, uniform velocity with each other. But is it so in, uh, in, in special relativity? If you, if you remember your uh, uh, Lorentz uh, transformations, so there is a, a space component even in the uh, time equation. Okay? And that in a sense leads to uh, another interesting uh, concept in a consequence in, in special relativity. It is called um, time dilation. Okay? So, what is it? In, in the, the, what is the uh, in long and short of it? It is just moving clocks appear to run slow. Okay. So, it is nothing to do with uh, how good the machine inside the clock was, uh, it is it's, it's the, it's the concept of physics here. Okay. Or in other words, uh, the time expands for a uh, moving body. Okay. Right. So, uh, let us take an example, uh, a short one. Uh, what, what, how, do, how do you, how do you uh, measure such a thing? How do you uh, get the feel of such a thing? of things like time dilation. Okay? So, uh, if you consider a person uh, who is uh, inside a train and this train is uh, moving with a certain uh, velocity v, uh, okay, with respect to the station of course, uh, station or stations in this case. Okay? Then, uh, uh, for the person who is sitting in this train, uh, he uh, matches his own watch. I mean, uh, this uh, he has synchronized his watch with the uh, one of the station clocks earlier, okay, let us say. Then, uh, in the next station, when uh, the train passes, uh, he looks at the station clock and then he will see that uh, um, the times in his watch and the station clock will not match. Okay? So, that is again what is meant by uh, you know, an example of a time dilation. But uh, let us have a more, um, more pictorial example of, uh, this, uh, uh, of this concept, okay? so, which will uh, clarify it a little bit more. Uh, say that you have uh, 
two stations and then you have uh, a synchronized clocks in these two stations okay synchronized in a sense that um, so they give the uh, say the same the the, uh, the, the the times are synchronized okay so uh, so well i should say that if you have two stations you need two clocks there okay so uh, so we have our two clocks so one uh, on the on the left of your screen and one on the right of your screen and it's written as station a and station b and then there are clocks there okay fine then what happens suppose let's say a person uh, moves with a with a certain velocity in a uniform velocity v okay in a in a train coach and then he has a watch uh, on his wrist let's say so he's talking of a wrist watch and then he checks his time in this wristwatch and he adjusts it according to uh, the uh, to the time in uh, in station a so that he synchronizes his clock with station a okay now when he passes station b okay what he will observe is that the uh, the uh, the time or the uh, whatever time it is in his wristwatch and whatever time it is in station b and then the station clock they'll not match okay so this is a more pictorial way of uh, saying the thing okay well why is it so okay now for that we have to be a little bit more uh, quantitative and uh, so let's consider uh, two events okay I'll, 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 I'll explain what these events are let's let's just define what this uh, the uh, space time coordinates of these events first okay so uh, so we consider two events we call it event 1 and event 2 seen from uh, two different uh, frames of reference s and s prime okay and as always we take uh, the s prime frame that's moving with a certain um, uniform velocity with respect to s okay uh, if uh, the uh, the uh, space time coordinates of these two events in uh, in e uh, of these two events in uh, s frame okay that is x1 y1 z1 and t1 so that's measured at t1 and then the second uh, uh, event occurs at position x2 y2 z2 and at time t2 okay and correspondingly uh, these two events uh, occurs in the uh, in the uh, prime frame uh, with uh, x1 prime y1 prime and z1 prime at this position and at uh, time t1 prime and then at, uh, at the second event occurs at uh, at, at the positions uh, x2 prime y2 prime and z2 prime and at time t2 prime then um, what we have uh, or if you want to be a little bit uh, more specific now if you wish to uh, define these uh, events in terms of our um, uh, train example uh, we take uh, the frame in which the uh, so uh, first we define what our s frame and this s prime frames are okay so uh, the frame in which uh, the person uh, with his clock is at rest is the uh, s prime frame okay now this frame so it's moving with a certain uniform velocity uh, relative to uh, stations A and B, okay, and the, these are uh, fixed in uh, frame S, okay. So now we've defined what our frames are. So the stations are, so you, you somebody is watching from the station, so that's S frame, okay. And then you are, uh, then, and then the uh, person in the train uh, sitting uh, sitting in the train uh, looking at his wristwatch, okay. So that's the S prime frame. So, uh, so, uh, so when the person uh, passes station A, let's call that as event one. Okay, so it's got a certain position at a certain time. Okay, and similarly, when the person uh, passes station B, let's call that as event two. Um, seen from two different frames, of course, uh, the uh, positions are different and uh, the times are also different. Okay, so. Uh, so what we have 
remember in the S prime frame in which uh, uh, the uh, person uh, with his uh, clock is at rest, the events E1 and E2 has occurred at the same space coordinate but in a different time. Why is that? You see, he is at rest within the uh, uh, within the um, within the train carriage, let's say, and then he just looks at his watch at the same position. So his position coordinates are the same, okay. But then he, from his point of view, he has looked at it at different times, and that's why he gets different times, okay. And just to keep the mathematics a little bit simpler, we uh, we also take uh, you know so moving in uh, the common x and x prime direction so that the uh, y primes are also uh, y y's and z's are also the same here uh, but in in terms of coordinates uh, in the s prime frame we have x1 prime is equal to x2 prime and then y2 prime is equal to y1 prime and z2 prime equal to z2 prime z1 prime is equal to z2 prime that's it but the times are different okay so so what are these times quote unquote uh, the times uh, in um, in s frame that's uh, seen from uh, from from the station okay uh, so from the unprime frame if you call this the time t1 okay so we just have the uh, lorentz contraction equations or lorentz uh, uh, lorentz transformation equations to be more precise here so um, so t1 that is uh, t1 prime plus uh, v x prime by c square divided by root over of 1 minus v square by c square and t2 is t2 prime plus uh, uh, v x2 uh, by c square into root over of 1 minus v square by c square okay so uh, the uh, time interval between uh, these two events according to uh, the observer in s okay so according to the uh, measurement uh, made in S frame, so that's delta t, let's say. So what's delta t now? So delta t is just uh, t2 minus t1, okay, and that is uh, t2 prime minus t1 prime plus uh, v by c square into x2 minus x1 prime uh, divided by uh, the usual uh, denominator root over 1 minus v square by c square, okay. Now, what's the uh, time interval uh, uh, according? So that's the time interval uh, uh, of these two events according to the observer in S frame. Okay, but in the S prime frame, remember uh, the positions of these two events were the same. Okay, so uh, we have x two prime and x one prime are the same. So x two prime minus x one prime is zero. Okay. So uh, that will uh, give us what? That will give us that this delta t is uh, delta t prime. So we have defined delta t prime as um, the uh, time difference as um, measured by the, uh, the observer in the S prime frame. Remember, the S prime frame is the one in which the person sitting in this train carriage is looking at his watch. Okay. So what do we get? So what we get is delta t prime is delta t into root over of 1 minus v square by c square, okay. So just you, you get a feeling that uh, you, 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 you immediately see that um, delta t prime uh, is actually uh, less than this uh, delta t here, okay. Now what does it mean physically? It means that the uh, time interval measured by the moving clock relative to s will be smaller than the time interval measured by the clock stationary in s okay so in other words uh, what we have is uh, this confirmation of uh, the statement uh, with which we started with that moving clocks run slower However, I should uh, remind you that uh, if uh, the velocity is much, much less than the speed of light, then uh, you will immediately see that these two time intervals are the same, okay? So they, they are approximately the same. 
So uh, next time you come from, let's say, Delhi to Ruhi, and then uh, you look at uh, the station clocks. Uh, supposedly, I mean, you're moving with uniform velocity and all these things, with respect to the station in all cases. Um, you shouldn't, you, you, uh, well, you shouldn't and you wouldn't uh, see this, uh, this thing, this time dilation. Okay. Okay. So, so having uh, seen this, this thing, uh, let's uh, have a look at uh, what uh, proper time is. Okay. So, what's the proper frame? What's the proper frame of reference? So, a reference, a reference frame in which uh, body is at rest, it's called its proper frame. We know that. And uh, we've also measured, uh, we know what a proper length is. So, the uh, length of the body measured in this proper frame is called its um, proper length. So, uh, the uh, time measured by a clock at rest in uh, the uh, proper frame is the proper time. Okay. So, just like uh, the proper length is the uh, uh, proper time invariant, well I think it is, but let us just uh, uh, have a, a look at it once again. Okay. So, uh, so, what's, so the time interval, so what is the proper time interval to be more precise? So, it is the uh, time interval measured uh, between two events by a single clock at rest at the same place um, is the proper time interval between uh, two events. We just had a example of a person sitting in a train uh, looking at his watch at two different stations. So, that is an example of, you know, his position is not changing according to him in, uh, he is sitting in the same place in a carriage. So, his position is not changing and then he looks at his own watch. So, that is a single clock and he is sitting at rest in the train. So, according to him, he is measuring uh, the proper time, okay, by a single clock. However, I mean at the same time interval, you know, if you are going to measure it from another frame, having a relative velocity with respect to the proper frame. So, you need uh, two clocks at different places. So, that is exactly what we had. We had uh, two stations uh, and two clocks and then they had to be synchronized in the beginning. Well, in a sense, this time sometimes is also, this kind of time is also, time interval rather, is also called non-proper. So, um, so if uh, if the velocity of uh, the uh, second frame, the uh, of another frame be v uh, relative to the proper frame with uh, proper uh, time interval delta tau between these events, um, then the uh, non-proper time interval delta t uh, measured uh, from the uh, second frame, of course, uh, by subtracting uh, the time measured from two different clocks, um, will be uh, delta tau divided by root over a 1 minus uh, v square by c square. Okay. And uh, so, what is this delta tau? That is the proper time. So, it is delta t into uh, root over a 1 minus uh, v square by c square. Okay. Now, if uh, in another frame in which it is uh, moving with the velocity v prime with respect to the proper frame. Uh, if the uh, time interval measured between the same two events is uh, delta uh, t prime, uh, then obviously delta t prime is again uh, delta tau divided by root over now v prime squared by v squared. So, you immediately see that uh, if we just write out the delta tau here, uh, uh, the delta tau is nothing but uh, delta t uh, into root over of uh, 1 minus v square by c square. That is the time corresponding to this uh, uh, in the measured in the frame, the time interval measured in the frame. It is moving with a certain velocity v. Then t prime is time interval measured in the frame in which it is moving with a certain uh, speed v prime. Um, so, that is equal to delta tau. Okay. And uh, so, delta tau is uh, invariant quantity. Okay. 
So the uh, proper time, just like the uh, proper length, uh, is an uh, invariant uh, quantity. Okay, so um, let's look at an example. Okay, or well, let's look at some examples here on 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 these um, on these consequences of time dilation, proper time, and um, see what else we can do from here. Okay. Um, let's take a simple but interesting example. So, you know a muon is that's a subatomic particle, okay. And uh, a muon is uh, observed to move approximately uh, something like uh, 800 meters uh, on an average uh, during its lifetime in the laboratory, okay. So, if one uh, looks up um, the uh, mean lifetime of a muon from one of these uh, particle physics books or uh, these data tables, um, you will see that it is something like um, 2 into 10 power minus 6 seconds. Okay. So, if we just go and write uh, the velocity as the distance covered and then this mean lifetime. So, that is 800 meters by 2 into 10 power minus 6 seconds, we end up with 4 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Okay. This is much bigger than the speed of light. Okay. Now, this is this is heresy in, in special relativity and, uh, and uh, what do we do? I mean, obviously, uh, we have not considered something. So, what is that? Well, uh, one needs to consider that uh, what is what, uh, given as mean lifetime of this muon uh, is actually its um, proper lifetime. Okay? So, when you are measuring uh, the, uh, the, uh, the length uh, in the laboratory, okay? so you need to divide this by the, uh, this quote unquote uh, improper lifetime. So, the measurement of the time and the measurement of the, um, the distance this muon has traveled should be done in the same frame that is it. Okay. So, so this quote unquote improper lifetime of this uh, muon as um, measured in a frame moving with this velocity v um, uh, with respect to this proper frame. So, what is that? So, if we remember just a few slides back, we uh, talked of uh, the proper time interval that is divided by root over 1 minus v square by c square. So, the proper time here is 2 into 10 power uh, minus 6 seconds. So, we divide that by root over 1 minus v square by c square. Okay. And uh, uh, that is what we get. Um, the, uh, the speed of the muon is now 800 meters uh, divided by delta t that is this improper lifetime. And uh, if you put in this um, this expression which we obtained earlier, we will land, land up with uh, the speed of this muon to be a four fifth of uh, the speed of light. So this is still uh, less than the speed of light, okay? And it doesn't, uh, uh, you know, it's not more than speed of light as we had uh, done, uh, as we had seen. Uh, it would be if uh, if you do it in a in a wrong sense, of course. Okay, so uh, let me now move over to uh, another uh, interesting uh, concept. It's the um, uh, relativity of uh, simultaneity. Okay, so and uh, then I shall uh, later on talk of things called um, earlier. You know the concepts of earlier and later. Okay, so the concepts like if you um, are if a certain event is uh, you know, following a sequence. I mean, some some event has occurred earlier and then later, and then uh, does it appear to be in the same sequence in some other frame or not? Okay. But before that, um, we do a little, um, uh, uh, you know, a more basic thing. It's called this uh, relativity of simultaneity. So, uh, so what's it? That's going to that, that we're going to say here. Uh, what we're saying is that uh, two events are said to be simultaneous if uh, they occur at the same instant of time. Of course, I mean that's the um, that's the basic definition of uh, what you would see for a simultaneous event. Okay. 
But the question is if these events are um, to be simultaneous in one inertial frame, so is it going to be simultaneous in another frame of reference which is you know, so when you talk of inertial frames, so we, the frames here are moving with uniform velocity with respect to each other. Okay? So if it is simultaneous in one frame, is it going to be simultaneous in another frame? Okay? So for that, uh, I think uh, it will be good if we uh, see it in a more pictorial fashion here. So we uh, talk of uh, event 1. Okay? So uh, we say event 1. So uh, now it is it's, it's occurred at a certain uh, position. So the x1, y1, z1 say at certain time um, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in S frame let us say. Okay? And then the same event is um, seen to be uh, at positions uh, at, at position x1 prime, y1 prime, z1 prime and then the time measured is um, t uh, prime. Okay? So that is the event seen from uh, the uh, the frames S and S prime. So remember, S prime is also moving with a certain um, uniform velocity with uh, respect to the S frame. Okay. Now, if you talk of another event, okay, um, seen by the uh, observer in uh, S and S prime frame, so it's occurred at a different position and time altogether again. So, um, okay. So uh, what's it? Um, what's the relation between this uh, between these uh, time components? So we know it. We know it's um, t one pr prime. That's equal to t one minus uh, v x one by c squared divided by root over one minus v square by c squared. Okay. So um, and same thing for the uh, for the uh, second uh, measured uh, time in. In uh, frame S prime, so that's t two prime is uh, just t two minus uh, so uh, minus v x two by uh, c square divided by one minus v square by c square. Remember, this unprime things are for the S frame, and then this uh, prime things are for the um, S prime frame. Okay. So, what's the difference between these two times? Okay. Um, I, as seen, uh, well, the difference between these two primes is obvious. So it's uh, t two prime uh, minus t one prime. So we find that's uh, the same as t uh, two minus t one. So the things on the right hand side are the uh, uh, the coordinates, um, the time that we have in the s frame. Okay. So that's t two minus t one minus of v of x2 minus x1 by c square and root divided by root over of 1 minus v square by c square. Okay? So if these events are simultaneous in, in uh, S frame, okay, then of course uh, it is occurred uh, you know, at the same time. So we take t1 is equal to t2. Okay? So that would mean that we have uh, from this equation of um, difference of times in the prime frame. So we have on the right hand side, we have taken out uh, t1 minus t2. Okay. However, so the position, so that is x1 minus x2. So that, well, it is not 0. Why? Because if it is 0, so you would not be able to distinguish between these events. Okay. So, um, so that is not 0. Okay. So that would mean that um, the difference of uh, measured times of these two events in the um, prime frame is not zero because none of the quantities here are zero. You can see here. Okay. Um, so, what do you get? So, what we get is the uh, measured times in uh, uh, in the S prime frame need not be the same, even if uh, the times uh, are the same in you know the measured times are the same in the S frame. Okay, so in other words, uh, to be uh, more precise, uh, what we have is that uh, the events E1 and E2, okay, although uh, they may be simultaneous in one frame of reference, they need not be simultaneous in a, another inertial frame. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, we come then to uh, another interesting concept. It's the um, this, this, this this thing called the uh, sequence of events. Okay. Uh, the uh, concept of uh, the earlier and later, as we said, I mean, what we saw is that if something is happening, uh, you know, earlier in a certain frame, and then uh, another event is happening later in a certain frame, um, is this uh, order of events preserved? Okay, so why do we say that? Because we've just seen that uh, you know this simultaneity itself is a is a relative uh, concept here, so it depends on. Um, and it need, need not be a something um, which is simultaneous in one frame of reference, need not be uh, simultaneous in a, another frame of reference. So, will this uh, occur here too I mean, uh, in this sequence of events? So, uh, we consider uh, two events E1 and E2 again, and um, we see uh, these events from two different frames S and S prime. Okay, so this. Um, S prime frame, uh, it's moving with a certain uh, uniform velocity with respect to S. Okay, so uh, we we have written down what the uh, the space time coordinates of um, of these two events are in S frame and the um, S prime frame. Okay, so uh, the question that we now ask ourselves is that uh, if uh, these events occur in a certain sequence in uh, one frame. So, can it occur in the uh, reverse sequence in another frame? So, for that we again have to uh, look at uh, the, uh, the, uh, the difference of times uh, as measured in the S and this uh, the S prime frames. Okay, so, what is the uh, difference of time measured in the S prime frame? So, that is uh, T2 minus T1. Uh, that's the uh, time measured in the uh, difference of time measured in the uh, S frame minus of the uh, uh, this the velocity v um, into x2 minus x1. That's the uh, those are the positions as measured in the S frame by c square, and then the usual factor root over of one minus v square in the denominator. Okay. Now, if um, let's say event uh, Two has uh, the second event has occurred uh, later than event one in frame S. So obviously, uh, t two minus uh, t one is positive. Okay. Now that means that uh, for the reverse to happen in S frame, okay, what we have we have uh, you know t two minus t1 was positive uh, in S frame, but t2 prime minus t1 prime. So, that is not positive. Okay. So, in that case, what it means is that uh, we have um, the thing in the numerator. So, that is uh, t2 minus uh, t1 minus of v into x2 minus x1 divided by c square. That has to be uh, negative. Okay. That is obvious denominator here is positive. Okay. Now, if that is so, uh, we would uh, require x2 minus x1 divided by t2 minus uh, t1 to be greater than uh, c square by v. Okay. Now, now if this events are uh, causally connected that is uh, in a sense that uh, event e2 is happening as a consequence of uh, event 1 happening okay it's more like uh, you know you in a cricket field and then um, think of your favorite cricketer and then uh, what he does is he autographs a ball and it throws it at you okay and then so you catch the ball so he of uh, uh, the cricketer your favorite cricketer autographing a ball and then that's called an event one and then you catching uh, you know the throw that he uh, throws that's at uh, event two so this has to be done at a certain uh, you know so certain the, the message has to be passed at a certain speed here okay um, so you catching an autograph ball is in a sense dependent on 
the, your cricketer signing the ball okay so unless uh, the cricketer signs the ball and throws it to you you cannot catch the ball okay so in a sense uh, some message has been passed in this case in the example of uh, two events which are causally connected okay so uh, in a sense what we have is that some message which is originating from the first event uh, reaches the, uh, the second uh, the place uh, the position of the second event traveling with some speed let's say it's some speed u okay then the uh, minimum speed that this u should have is actually x2 minus x1 divided by t2 minus t1 difference of these positions and the difference of this measure time it's a minimum thing that a value that you should have okay u that is uh, the uh, the alphabet u and u now what does it mean now this u in this uh, case uh, would have c square uh, would be more than c square by v okay uh, why because x2 minus x1 divided by t2 minus t1 that's more than c square by v so that's the uh, condition one has to satisfy remember if the sequence of event is uh, is reversed in uh, in another frame and the events are causally connected okay but then we will end up with a problem the problem is that uh, v here is less than c okay or at most it's c so at most it's c but so it cannot you cannot go more than it's the speed of light but then what about u the uh, alphabet u that is the speed u you see that it's uh, more than c okay so this again um, is uh, is not allowed. So because why? As I said again, uh, because v is the speed, uh, s prime frame is uh, moving uniformly with respect uh, to a frame s. Okay. So uh, in a sense, it would mean that uh, the uh, message between the events e one and e two is traveling with a speed greater than the speed of light. So this is not allowed. Okay. So uh, this condition is not fulfilled. This condition is the wrong condition. Okay. Now, since it's not possible to fulfill this condition, uh, if uh, the uh, events uh, E1 and E2 are uh, causally connected, then uh, it means that uh, the concept of earlier and later between events um, will be preserved in all inertial frames okay so that's the point here so if the events are causally connected then it's uh, uh, going to be uh, preserved but uh, if uh, the events are not causally connected okay so event second event let's say is happening independent of uh, whether event one occurs or not okay in that case uh, the opposite can be true okay so that's the case when they are not causally connected okay so what we saw is that uh, all the, these things called the uh, simultaneity or the relativity of simultaneity tells us that uh, if uh, two events are simultaneous in a certain uh, inertial frame, so it need not be uh, simultaneous in uh, the uh, another inertial frame. Okay, but uh, the uh, the concepts of earlier and later, so that is preserved. Uh, uh, if uh, the events that we are talking of, uh, they are um, causally connected. Okay. So, as usual, let's have a few examples to uh, clarify our concepts. Okay. Um, so, let's take uh, two events here, E1 and E2, and uh, in S frame, and uh, we give the position coordinates of these um, of these events here in the S frame and uh, also write down what's the um, times here. So here let's say E1 is happening uh, at position X1 is X0 and then uh, the you know the Y and Z are 0 here so okay and the X2 is happening at a position 2 X0 and then uh, the, uh, the time T1 that's X0 by C so C being the speed of light and t2 is uh, x0 by uh, 2c okay now if uh, 
the this event is um, simultaneous. So, see that in, in S frame this um, this event is not simultaneous, it is happening at uh, different times. Okay. But uh, if this event is simultaneous in another frame, so which is moving with a certain velocity uh, v let us say along the uh, common x x prime axis okay, relative to the s frame, uh, what is uh, this velocity and what is the uh, time that uh, uh, what is the simultaneous time that is being measured in s prime uh, frame. Okay. So, how do you go about doing these things? So, let us look at uh, the uh, time intervals as seen from uh, the S frame and the S prime frame. So, since uh, the events are simultaneous in the S prime frame, so T 2 minus T 1, so that is 0. So, if you look at the uh, second uh, step or the second equation, so on this numerator you put in the uh, times that we had for the event in uh, for the events other that we had in the S frame and then also the uh, uh, difference of uh, their positions um, and divide it by the root over of v square minus 1 minus v square by c square v being the velocity with which S prime frame is moving with respect to the S frame. So, we immediately get um, uh, what uh, we get the left hand side to be 0 of course and uh, we can immediately find what uh, v is and we see that v is actually minus uh, c by 2. Okay. So, how do you find uh, the uh, time in the prime frame? Remember in the uh, prime frame the events are simultaneous. So, uh, so t 1 prime that is nothing but t 1 minus uh, v x by uh, by c squared okay divided by root over 1 minus v square by c square and then uh, what you're going to do is you're going to substitute uh, uh, t1 by uh, the measured time you know for a certain position so if x is x0 we look at this problem that the uh, this was measured at time t1 is equal to x0 by c okay and we know the velocity now uh, with which this prime frame is moving that is minus c by 2. So, immediately get what this um, uh, time is in the uh, uh, prime frame of reference. So, t 1 prime is root 3 x 0 by uh, c. Okay. So, uh, let us go to a, another problem. Okay. Uh, well, uh, let us look at this problem first. Okay. So, uh, in a certain inertial frame, let us say, so we have two events uh, which occur at the same place and um, they are separated by a time interval of 4 seconds. Okay. Now, uh, in another uh, inertial frame, the question is uh, what is the uh, sp uh, spatial separation, what is the uh, sp uh, separation in these three coordinates here between these two coordinates if uh, these are separated by a time interval of uh, 6 seconds. Okay. So, uh, that is what we do. Uh, we um, first uh, try to find uh, what is the um, velocity with which uh, uh, these frames are moving with respect to each other. Okay. So, uh, call um, the uh, prime frame that is the uh, you know so uh, the frame in which uh, the um, time separation between um, these two events are 6 seconds. So, that is the uh, prime frame uh, say it uh, call it like that. So, what is the um, um, corresponding um, you know, uh, portion of this uh, time difference in, um, in the S frame? How do you do it? So, it is T 1 minus uh, T 2 or it is T 2 minus T 1 rather uh, minus uh, V x 2 minus x 1 divided by V square uh, root over of 1 minus uh, V square by C square. Okay. So, here we have uh, so, you put instead of t 2 minus t 1, you put that to be 6 and uh, t 2 minus uh, t 1, you put that to be 4 and uh, you find what v is and this v in this particular case would be two over 5 by 3 into the uh, speed of light. Okay. 
Now, having uh, found that, it's uh, very easy to find what uh, the uh, spatial separation is. So, we just find uh, what the spatial separation is. So, that's um, x2 prime minus x1 prime. That's uh, x2 minus x1 minus of uh, g into g2 minus t1 into root over of 1 minus e square by c square. And we know the, uh, you know, the uh, spatial um, separation in the s frame, that's 0. It's, it's happened at the same place. So, um, what's the uh, uh, spatial separation in uh, the prime frame? So, that actually is, um, if you put in the proper uh, times uh, here, so I mean the proper times not in the, in the sense of proper time, proper length, uh, I mean you put in the right times here, so that is T2 minus T1 um, and uh, you get uh, the uh, difference to be minus 2 into root over of 5 C, okay. So, the proper length, uh, the proper separation is, is the modulus of this of course, so that is twice of root over of 5 C. Okay. So, we have uh, seen so far um, it is another consequence of uh, time uh, dilation. We have uh, talked of, uh, um, you know, we have talked of how or why uh, moving clocks uh, run slow. You know, the things are, uh, it is, we, we, we uh, derived it from, um, uh, we derived this consequence from uh, uh, the Lorentz transformations. Then uh, we talked of uh, the relativity of simultaneity. So, in which uh, we uh, showed that uh, two events which are uh, simultaneous in an inertial frame need not be uh, simultaneous in another frame, okay. And then uh, in the um, third uh, part, we saw that uh, the sequence of events, uh, they are preserved uh, in all inertial frames if the events are, uh, if this um, events are causally connected. Okay. So, in the uh, next lecture, what you are going to see is um, talk of uh, Doppler effect in, uh, in light and see what next we can do from there. Okay, Doppler effect. I think we um, we are a bit familiar with Doppler effect in sound, where um, you know if uh, the uh, the so you have a source moving, uh, you know, you you standing some uh, you standing at a distance, and then from a distance, a train is coming at you. Okay, and and the train is blowing its horn or giving a whistle, then. Um, you see that as the train moves towards you, the frequency that changes. Okay, so that's the Doppler effect. So the source is moving here. So, or if the source is uh, at rest and the observer is moving, uh, you know the observed uh, uh, frequency of sound is also different. Uh, so we're going to look at whether Doppler effect is there in light or not. Uh, well, that's uh, a thing for the next lecture. Thank you very much.